Ave Maria, so welcome back to No Apologies. Today we're going to take a look at a few more points concerning Jehovah Witnesses and the divinity of Jesus. So in order to deny the divinity of Jesus, sometimes Jehovah Witnesses point to certain Bible verses which seem to show that Jesus didn't have a complete knowledge of all things. So for example, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 36, referring to the end times, our Lord says, but of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. So in reading scripture verses like that, it's important to remember that Jesus has two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. And in his answer to the apostles, because he didn't seem that it was expedient for them to have that knowledge, he limited himself to just what he knew as man. So as God, he certainly knew the date of the end time. He spoke of the things which were to occur in great detail. And the end time takes place at his second coming. So certainly our Lord knew the date of his second coming. And he gives us small glimpses of that in various other verses. Like in the Gospel, again of Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, our Lord says, And this Gospel of the Kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world, and then the end will come. And also the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 24 through 27, our Lord says, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming on in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels, and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. So as God, he certainly knew the events and the date of his second coming. Other passages which are sometimes pointed to by Jehovah Witnesses, which seem to show that Jesus is somehow subordinate to God the Father. But for example, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 28, our Lord says to the apostles, You heard me say to you, I go away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. But again, verses like this it simply refers to him and his nature as man and they need to be read in the light of other scripture verses which reveal him as also God. So, for example, in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 30, our Lord says very clearly, I and the Father are one. And also in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 19, he tells Philip, He that has seen me has also seen the Father. So scripture has to be read as a united whole not by isolating just this or that passage while ignoring the others. Another reasonable argument against the idea that Jesus is not divine is just simply that that idea really undermines the whole salvific value of his sacrifice. So Jesus had to be true man and true God in order to be able to redeem us. He had to be true man in order to be able to suffer and die and make up for the sins committed by man but he had to be true God so that that sacrifice carried with it an infinite value which would be enough to make up the infinite debt which we owed towards God. So no creature, no matter how holy, would be able to fulfill that debt. His sacrifice would always fall short. Then finally we want to look at two quotes from the early church fathers defending Christ's divinity. The first from St. Ignatius of Antioch who died in the year 110 AD, in his letter to the Ephesians, just wrote very plainly, For our God, Jesus Christ, was conceived by Mary in accord with God's plan. Then the second one, taken from St. Irenaeus, who lived in the year 140 to 202, wrote in his work Against Heresies, referring to heretics, he says, But not knowing him, Jesus, who from the Virgin is Emmanuel, they are deprived of his gift, which is life eternal. And not receiving the word of incorruption, they remain in mortal flesh and are the debtors of death, not having received the antidote of life. Nevertheless, what cannot be said of anyone else who ever lived, that he, Jesus, is himself in his own right, God and Lord and eternal King and only begotten and incarnate word, 
proclaimed as such by all the prophets and by the apostles and by the Spirit himself, may be seen by all who obtain to even a small portion of the truth. The scriptures would not have borne witness to these things concerning him, if, like everyone else, he were a man. So our Lord is divine, as is supported by sacred scripture, by common sense, and also by the early church fathers. Thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. Ave Maria.